most certainly is a celebrity. It's the extremely talented and the frightfully famous Mr. Patrick Moore. Thank you very much for joining us. Nice to be here. Would you like a martini? What Shake a good a idea. There we are. I've made one up for you special. Thank you. But what about you? Won't you join me in one? Well, I, I might have one, but it might be drugged, you see. So I've got to be very careful. Perhaps I should be also. Well, it's up to you. Take it or leave it. And it's got a lady with olives. Oh, I like girls. A lady. You like girls? Um, I like olives. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Mm. Which animal would you least like as a pet? Um, let me see. Um, don't think I'd like a monkey somehow. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know why not, really. I don't, I don't dislike monkeys. I just don't think I'd like one as a pet. Fine. That's fair enough. Mm. You don't have to justify no, anything no, no, on no. this show. That's fine. Which crime would you most like to commit? Ah, oh, now I can give you an answer to this one. Mm. You know, if you go and buy a packet of biscuits, yes. uh, it's done up in this transparent stuff that you yeah. can't tear. Oh, yes. And almost everything is done up in that same stuff. You can't tear. You've got to, you've got to, pe 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 you've got to penetrate it somehow. Yeah. I would like to meet the man who invented that stuff so I could yes. personally, and with my bare hands, strangle him. I don't want it to come to that. Tell us about the Halley's Comet Society. In the Halley's Comet Society, always known as Halley. Oh, right. You see, uh, Edmund Halley was the second astronomer royal, right. and you probably pronounce his name Halley, not right. Halley, and certainly not Haley, mm. but um, uh, the Hallis Comedy Society has no aims, no objects, and no ambitions. Great. All it does is to meet occasionally on licensed premises. It's the only completely useless society in the entire world, apart, of course, from the United Nations. That's the whole idea. I've got a little rocket here, mm -hmm. which uh, I tried to launch this morning, and it didn't quite reach the moon. I wonder why not. Uh, have you got you... any particular theories about why it didn't work? Uh, possibly the motors aren't quite powerful mm, enough. Not... I mean, it's got to be propelled by hand power, presumably. Yes, absolutely. You've got to start off at a speed of seven miles a second, which is um, roughly 25,000 mph. And um, I'm sure you're very muscular, but I'm sure you couldn't do that. Uh, no. Have a go. If you can do that, I can't understand why the government isn't interested. So what we've got here is we've got this wonderfully complicated painting by numbers kit. Oh, um, no. And all the stuff to go with it, the paint brushes, the, the oils, oh, the lot. And what we'd like you to do is we'd like you to have a go at finishing this off. And we'll mark you on it later in the quiz, you see. Cracking. Get cracking. Very well. Ladies and, and gentlemen, well. we'll be coming back to Patrick later on during a quiz. I hope he makes a masterpiece. Thank you. Are you really uh, enjoying that? Yes. No. No, I, I mean... I felt I had the gist of it. Available at Good Chemists Everywhere. The Magic Mata Hari Makeup Compact. Ideal for covering those nasty spots and contacting Russian spies. Hello? Hello? Beam me up. Beam me up. Beam me up. Am I getting through? See you after the break. <laughs> And Steve Martin, star in the comedy, star in the comedy. May I suggest we resume the debriefing? There are a few things I'd like to check out first, sir. And where are you going to do that, James? I'd rather not talk about it. Most embassies have a room which is lead-lined and suspended inside the building to prevent sound and radio leaks. Vital to the security of the United States and to the free world. And now some footage without Roy Castle in it. Football Hollywood star with Sean Connery as crying Gaza and the US Army as Chris Waddle shooting penalties over the bar. Not a dry eye in the house. That's the third he's missed. Never mind Gaza. Meanwhile, on the bench, one of the substitutes begins to warm up. Who says the South Americans have all the flair and technical ability? Paul Gascoigne's sister, Wendy, or Wazza, shows off a trick or two. A real ball artist, but sadly suspect in the tackle and short of genuine pace. This is not a laughing matter. Spycatcher revelations. In his book Spycatcher, Peter Wright alleged... MI5 once plotted against Harold Wilson when he was Prime Minister. MI5 also plotted to kill President Nasser of Egypt with special poisons they tested on sheep. Nikita Khrushchev's suite at Claridge's was bugged by British intelligence during a state visit to Britain. Soviet spy Guy Burgess was instructed to seduce one of Winston Churchill's daughters. He couldn't rise to the occasion. Indeed, I know that. We don't want any complaints about bad language, but the proper term for somebody who places a bug is, of course, a bugger. bugger. Okay, and, if so you're having, and if you are the person who is having the bug placed in your house, you are the buggy. buggy. That's the right. buggy. The buggy. Not the baby buggy, and you know, the buggy. No, it isn't. You can put a bug in almost anything, but the trouble is you need an aerial. That's the problem, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. you can hide the bug, but yeah. 
You see, it's pretty obvious, yeah. isn't it? Once I mean, you've got the area light. And also, if that is supposed to be a practical lighter, yeah, you and can't, in you my just, pocket, it would look very silly. It would, it would ruin the line of my frock, exactly. apart from anything That's else. That's why. This is a real bug. This is called the, um, the plug bug, plug strangely bug. enough. And you're supposed to... It actually works as a plug as well. So you can actually plug in your hi-fi, but there's a bug in it. Mm. There's a bug in it. It is, or rather it was, one of our most closely guarded secrets. What's this? Phone Telephone tapping. tapping. <laughs> Don't joke. If you're not a very subtle spy, quite a good way of bugging is to go in, put that down and press play and record. Like that. Of course, the more subtle way is to use your dictaphone. A. <laughs> There's no need for language. Never. Never use your dictaphone. It makes an awful mess. That's part of its never-failing attraction. There is nothing illegal about buying or selling bugging equipment, but it is illegal to misuse information obtained by bugging or involving official secrets, right? So bugging your neighbour is not an offence, but trespassing the place to bug it is. Now, mm. that's fascinating, isn't that it? It is fascinating. There's also yeah. no privacy laws in Britain. I know. Anybody can come in and watch you in the bar for any time. You could have said something. Special microphones can detect the tiny vibrations of a window pane caused by voices inside the room. And to prevent such surveillance, American government buildings direct Muzak, you know, that sort of thing, at the windows to create a waterfall of sound to confuse the listeners. Now, highly sensitive buildings are coated, I don't believe this, with a type of silver foil to blanket such emissions. Do you believe that? Mm. There's loads and loads of buildings in the United States covered in tin foil to stop them being bugged. My God, but you're attractive. Oh. <laughs> don't look now, but I think there's someone trying to be sociable. Now, here's a curious coincidence. Agatha Christie wrote a spy story in 1934 with a hero called James Bond, 20 years before Ian Fleming invented 007. That information is on a need-to-know basis only. Which glamorous ex-newsreader refused the role of Miss Moneypenny because the devoted secretary never gets her man? I don't know. How many private detectives does it take to change a light bulb, Joe? I don't know. One, because they're generally quite intelligent people, actually, private detectives. Oh, of course aren't they? they are, yeah. and they wear intelligent disguises, like yes. this one. It, it is you, Joe, isn't it? No, it's not. My name is Shady McBrady, and I'm a private eye. From Wales, I'm presumably. <laughs> I'm after. You see, private eyes, they have such a wonderful image, don't they? they private, do. private dicks, you know. Old Dick Tracy. Yeah. You see, the American ones are... I'll take that off. The American ones are very different to the English ones, because they're like Dick Tracy. Lovely, lovely clothes he wears, and lovely fedora hats and all that sort of stuff, and travelling around town incognito and flash cars. You see, if you were a British private eye, you'd probably wear a packamac, a rain hood, and get a bus pass if you were lucky. That's right. It's probably not a very glamorous job at all. I'm sure it's not. And you, you have, have to have a bottle of whiskey in your drawer, don't you? Yeah, or well. you have to be seedy. All yeah. this business about being seedy. I yeah. think it's a bit unfair. I think it's probably a much maligned profession. Here's another disguise. Oh, yes. Although why you'd want to disguise yourself as an eagle is an beyond anteater, me. I think. Very attractive, darling. I think I ought to say at this, at this moment that um, private detectives huh? never wear flying helmets, so I'm going to take this off. I don't know why I had that on at all. Well, I don't know. It's just something to look cute. Two former air hostesses have set up Britain's first detective agency for women. And it's based in Godalming. And the women specialise in catching cheating husbands. I think Godalming is probably a hotbed of sin and vice, don't you? I'm sure it is, actually. We should get around there and see what's going on immediately. I think we'd better find out. Let's go. Subtlety. Isn't Subtlety it? is if, the key. If you're key following word. somebody, don't say, hold on a minute, I'm a bit tired, I've got to go for a coffee. Don't do that. No, because, no, because they'll fun. know that they're yeah. being followed. Say they're sitting on the bench, you should yeah. sit down, you know, on a, uh, on a bench in the park, sit yeah. down the one opposite, quietly, you know, yeah. pretend you're reading a paper, you know, <laughs> but keep an eye on them if you can. Raymond Burr, now this is a good one. Raymond Burr was a famous fictional, played the famous fictional um, detective. Perry Mason. Uh, Perry Ironside. Mason and Ironside. But Raymond Burr appeared as Perry Mason on a stamp issued by Nicaragua in 1972 to celebrate 50 years of Interpol. Is this your bra, I wonder? No, I don't think it is a bra, is it, Nick? It's no. not a very small bra at all. Eye patches. Eye patches. If you're a baddie, you have to wear an eye patch, and that's yeah. a fact. And if yeah. you're very, very, very bad, you wear two. That's like that. wonderful and very attractive. And, of course, if you're a French person, if oh, you're yeah? trailing a French person, oh, yeah? you have to wear a berry. Are we still doing bad jokes today? Yes. Chuck Berry. I oh, thank you. Oh, dear, 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 dear. What a stupid guy. Oh! Here I am again, and of course it was Selena Scott who refused the role of Miss Moneypenny. Is that so? 
ten actors who were considered for the role of James Bond. Pierce Brosnan, Mel Gibson, Brian Brown.